We're taking a short walk from the house today into this hollowway. With hedgerows either side of me, it's gonna be a great place to find some hazel. We're just a few meters into the footpath here and already I'm surrounded by hazel. I've had a little look on the floor already and it's revealed some discarded hazel nuts, the leftover signs of a good dinner from for mice, squirrels or voles last autumn. Now let's get a close look at the stool as it's known itself. This is called the stool, all these multiple stems here. And this is all probably just a single hazel tree. There could be a couple here. But the key thing to realise with hazel is that if given any chance, it will grow with multiple stems. And we can see older growth here, younger shoots coming up from the stem, a new shoot from the last year or so there too. So lots of different ages of growth just on one tree. A lot of hazel is found in hedgerows, which is where it often grows like this, because it's been either cut for hedge laying or for coppicing, or it's been flailed, which encourages multiple growth as well. I've come down to our local school grounds here in the village to show you another example of a hazel. This one's quite a bit younger than the specimen we saw in the hedgerow earlier, and you can see how it's got some lovely straight hazel rods growing up to the light. That's going to be great for coppice crafts. And you can see how it's been cut down right at base level in order to encourage that multi-stemmed growth. Let's take a closer look. So looking closer at the live twig. Now there's a terminal bud here. And on this twig, you might not be able to see it because you probably won't pick up on camera. There are very fine bristle-like hairs, although quite stiff. A bit like, a, imagine a pair of legs that have not been shaved for a few weeks. So think of hairy hazel, that might be a good way to remember it. These hairs are not all the twigs though, so with any tree, have a look at a few different live twigs and compare them to see if you can see all those distinguishing features that you can associate with the tree. Also, the buds are very close to the twig, pointing upwards towards the end of the tip. Now generally, a lot of the time in the books, you'll see the buds as being green in colour, but I'm noticing that on this tree, they're quite red as well. It's February now, and this month is a classic time to see these catkins in their full splendor on the hazel tree. I've actually singled out this branch, because this branch has been snapped off, it's dead, and it gives us a chance to see what the catkins would have looked like just a month or so ago, hanging on the tree. They're much more solid here. They haven't opened up yet. They're smaller and firmer to the touch with a slightly more greenish hue. If we go to the catkins on the live twig, we'll take these ones here as a great example. You can see how now in February, they are really starting to open up. They've much more got that lamb's tail feel and look to them, which is actually a country nickname for them. Now these catkins want to spread pollen to the flowers and the flowers are on the same tree. You've got the male parts and the female reproductive parts and they are here. It's a very small, beautiful scarlet red flower and the pollen will travel to there and it's these flowers that will one day become the hazelnuts. We've come a little closer here and hopefully you can make out these tiny red flowers that look a little bit like sea anemones. If you've got a little jeweler's lens or naturalist lens, have a look at these close up, they're beautiful structures. And it's one of those treasures to look out for at this time of year, a tiny splash of color in what is still quite a gray landscape. Beautiful. So squeeze down to the base of our hazel here. And you can see a really good example of the bark at different stages, what it looks like with different ages of the tree. Now hazel, when it's young, has quite a dark look to it, as you can see, with these little peelings, which you could be forgiven for thinking they're like silver birch. Can you see that? These little peelings easily can come off. And you do get that on the, the older bark as well, so look out for that. You also get these clear lenticles, these yellow green lenticles here and these marks all the way across. But then on the older bark, you can see here, it has a silvery sheen to it. The lenticles are still present, but it's got a much more gray look to the bark. That dark brown is completely gone. And it's got that silvery sheen, which is quite um, reminiscent of young oak trees as well. 
So a single um, trunked hazel could be confused looking at the bark for a young oak. Let's go further along this hedge line to see some other examples. All the way along here we've got overstood hazel coppice. We've got rods of all different ages all intertwined together and that's great for wildlife and it's great for us because we can see bark at different ages together but not great if you wanted really well managed coppice and you wanted a good kind of universal product that you can use for hazel hurdles or, or basketry work. But there's plenty of good examples of hazel here. Let's get a look close at some of the bark. This one over here is a good one. Here we've got kind of medium age hazel bark here and you can see it's got all these little breathing pores on it all the way across. New bark from the young shoots all the way to the older bark of the more established trunks. Hazel is one of those trees that looking under the tree in the winter season is actually quite a reliable method for making a positive ID. As long as it's a tree that's got some age to it. And the reason I say that is because what we're looking for is hazelnut shells like these. And very young hazel trees are not going to produce nuts. But for any older tree, this is going to be a really good reliable method. And we have a whole range. It's taken me a minute to gather this many. There's a whole load of them all over the floor just under the leaf litter from this last autumn and probably the autumn before as well. If you get into your tracking, you can start to learn about the different animals that have been feeding on the hazel as well. And I've been told that hazelnuts that are generally split right in half, like most of these are, that's the work of squirrels. Whereas if you find a hazelnut that's got a nibbled hole in it, that's more likely something like a mouse or a shrew. Now the hazelnuts themselves never fall far from the tree, so that's what makes it a really good, reliable method. If you've got a hazel tree, you're almost certainly gonna find some hazelnut shells on the ground there. Let's take a look at the leaf litter now and see if that's gonna help us make a positive ID. In this situation, we're in quite a young mixed woodland, so there's a lot of mixed leaf litter here. So as always, the rule with leaf litter is, the more isolated your tree is, the more reliable it can be as a method because you're more likely to just have the leaves from that tree falling on the ground. But I can show you the hazel leaves here and they are scattered all under the tree, mixed in with ash and oak and sycamore as well. But this is the hazel leaf here. It's very round. It's got a toothed edge. They can get bigger than this, probably a third bigger again. They can be smaller as well, but this is a good average sized hazel leaf. You can see the veins are very prominent as well, coming up diagonally along the leaf. Hazel leaves do hang around quite a lot on the ground though through winter, so it's not one of those tree species where the leaves just disintegrate. More than any other tree in the UK, hazel is the one most closely linked with traditional country crafts. And that's because it produces such beautiful material for us to work with, producing everything from hazel hurdles, for wattle and daub, for buildings, to trugs and baskets, all the way to the traditional boat, the Welsh Coracle. I actually built one myself from hazel a few years back, and it's amazing material to work with. The reason why hazel is so good for these traditional woodland products is because it naturally produces all these rods, flexible, strong and fast growing. Let's take a closer look. Now, well-managed coppice stool will be rods of all the same age. So let's say you're making hazel hurdles, you might want rods this kind of age, although they'd be a lot straighter and longer than this one here. If you're using it for basketry, perhaps something like this, which is a bit more flexible, you can get it into a tighter loop. For firewood, bigger stuff like this. Generally, in a short rotation coppice, Hazel is cut up to every seven years, depending on what it is you're managing for. Let's take a step back from the hazel and see if we can find any identifying features from a distance. What we have to remember about hazels when thinking about defining features of their shape and form is the situation that they're in, because hazels are really quite variable. It could be like this one behind me here, which is in a young woodland as part of the understory, 
where it's got quite a bit of room to spread out, but still also being a little bit forced upwards by the surrounding young trees so it can reach the light. But equally, the hazel could be part of a hedgerow where it's quite clipped and quite dense, or it could be part of an old coppice stump as well where it's cut right to the ground. So rather than looking for one kind of form or shape of hazel from a distance, what I look for is the messy appearance with multiple stems growing out, but also those straight rods that you can really notice from a distance, all sprouting up from the base of the tree and around the outside where they can get the sunlight. And we can see a lot of those straight rods in the tree behind me. Another thing you can look out for when identifying hazel from a distance, and this is especially useful if you're driving past the hazel at speed in a hedgerow or roadside verge, is all those catkins festooned across the branches in late winter. Look out for those. That can be a really good sign that you've got hazel there. Whilst out walking in the woods, I had to stop, set up the camera and film these two coppice stools to the left and right of me here. And that's because they really illustrate an example of coppice regrowth. These are hazels that I cut down about four years ago on a coppicing course. And you can see here, since those four years, how the stools have regenerated right from the base and grown these lovely straight poles that are gonna be great for all sorts of coppice craft. What we've got here is a beautiful example of hedge laying. And I wanted to bring you to this hedge because it's stocked full of hazel. And hazel is perfect for hedge laying. As we already know, hazel is used for coppicing to produce rods, which are used for all kinds of traditional crafts. But hedge laying is a little bit different. You still cut through the stem, but you don't cut all the way through. You leave a little bit on, and then that is laid down diagonally into what is called a pleacher and the life of the tree is just under the bark there and that energy is sent through the tree and it encourages new growth to come up and make the, an overgrown hedge much more stock proof and bring it back to life and that's what's been done here and it's a really beautiful example i really like hedge laying and i always like to stop and have a look at one if the job's been done well what we also have here are binders and these are made out of hazel they're these twisted pieces here but they are woven and twisted round these stakes and they give the top of the hedge when it's newly laid some strength and finish it off beautifully. It's a really good example of using hazel for its uh, construction purposes, much like you would do in a wattle and daub fence, but also how it regrows from the base to create this lovely lane hedge. Like many traditional crafts, hedge laying has a lot of regional variation and local names associated with it. Some parts of the country, these binders are known as heatherings. And some counties and different areas of the country have a local hedge laying style. So you can look out for those variations across the country. It's early January and I've stopped at this hazel coppice stool because something quite interesting is happening that you might not expect at this time of year. And that's of course these green leaves. So why are they here? Well, I think these leaves are here left over from last year. And the reason I say that is because this hazel leaf here is about as big as I'd expect them to get. Usually we're seeing this size of leaf in high summer. So I think these have come out due to mild conditions, a mild autumn. We've also had quite a mild winter so far. The other thing that tells me these aren't totally fresh is the frost damage we've got around the edge of the leaf and these brown spots and holes here as well. What I do know is that looking out for the leaves like this at this time of year on hazel is not a reliable method to make a positive ID. So we want to be using the buds, the twigs, the bark and the shape and form of the tree to make that positive identification. I wanted to show you one last hazel this winter. And hazel is usually talked about as a shrub, it's an understory tree. But given the right conditions, an old hazel can really spread. And that is what we've got here. This old hazel is a veteran stool that at one time was coppiced regularly, cut down to the ground. It actually belonged to part of an old hedgerow that has since been grazed out. And what's left over is this ancient hazel stool with all sorts of examples of age of rods growing up. So great example of a tree to get your eye in for the different ages of bark and the different shapes you're going to find within a hazel stool. A 
beautiful example. This hazel stool is so big, you could almost sit inside it. It's really spread out over the years. All the rods intertwined and the new growth shooting up for the sky. You can see here in the last couple of years or so where someone has actually been along and cut these rods off and harvested them for various crafts. But new rods will grow again as we can see out here to the edge of the tree you've got all this young growth coming up here at the edge as the new buds are activated and reach for the sunlight. Well I hope you found this useful in building your knowledge to help make a positive identification of hazel in winter. So now it's over to you. Happy hazel hunting. Thank you so much for watching the video and I hope it's piqued your interest to find out more about the beautiful native tree species that we have here in Britain. But before you go, I wanted you to know that this video is actually just a taster of a much larger tree identification video course that I've created for people just like you. The full course covers over 50 tree species that you'll commonly find here in the UK and we look at those tree species in all four seasons, starting in winter to spring, summer, and then finally autumn. In each season, we're gonna be picking out those distinctive features, which means you'll be able to identify the tree no matter the time of year. As well as videos like you've seen today, the full course also includes hundreds of photos, you're gonna get questionnaires on tree species, and you'll also receive a certificate at the end of the whole course. Let me help you see the wood from the trees as I take you from tree beginner to tree expert. To find out more, simply follow the link in the description below and you'll also get access to two more free tree ID videos as a preview. So you're just one click away from becoming a tree expert. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you again in the woods.